Good day and welcome to Shepherd's Way. I'm Robert O'Neill, pastor of Shepherd's Way Christian Church, where it is our heart to lead and care for people God's way. We hope you enjoyed the message today and we thank you for joining us. We've been in a series, started last Sunday, talking about being hungry for God's will. Hungry for God's will. Anybody got my clicker? Hungry for God's will. We are hungry for God's will. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. He's telling us there's a promise to those who are hungry for God and His righteousness. Hungry for doing God's will. And this is our thematic thrust that we'll be dealing with, hungry for God's will. That is our uh, sermon series we're dealing with, being hungry for God's will. And last week we talked about uh, we talked about the will of God satisfies. Amen. That doing the will of God satisfies. God Amen. brings life's satisfaction, that there is life satisfaction for doing God's will. Doing God's will <coughs> keeps us living a happy, fulfilled, and successful life. Amen. Doing the will of God. Doing the will of God does not mean we will, will not suffer, does not mean we will not have hard times or low times, but it does mean at the end of the day, he has promised to fulfill us by yeah. doing His will. Yeah. So He says, "Blessed, happy are those who are hungry for doing, hungry and thirsty for doing the will of God, the right His righteousness, for they shall be filled." And today I want to look in the same passage we've been in in John chapter four, and we're going to begin reading at John chapter four, and begin verse thirty-one. John chapter four, verse thirty-one says this. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, talking about Jesus, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. Amen. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? The next verse says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are four months then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to talk to us from this subject, following the will, following, go back, following God's will in this season. I want to talk about following God's will in this season. Following God's will in this season. What we will discover is that, what we already know is that earth has how many seasons? Four, four seasons. Earth has four seasons. It has uh, winter, summer, uh, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. It has four seasons. And in these four seasons, uh, you and I live in these four seasons. And in the springtime when it comes, we know springtime brings about life. It brings about new birth. It brings, uh, things begin to start over again. In the summertime, it brings uh, growth. We enjoy positive transitions and even relaxation during the summertime. Mm -hmm. In the autumn time, uh, we can recall in our autumn times that we begin to reap some of the benefits of hard work. Farmers begin to reap what they have sown. It's a time of reaping and bringing together, bringing in a harvest. Matter of fact, I just had a fight with a pile of ants that, that got inside my house because they were reaping uh, the heart, they were getting out every, every crumb that was left around, they were reaping the harvest because they were getting ready for the winter. They were going to sit back and relax. And then there is the winter season where things die. Things are exposed and things are lost. That is in uh, the winter season. And even though that is the seasons of the world, of our earth, that is the same kind of thing that as human beings we go through in life. We have spring seasons where things grow. We have summer seasons where we enjoy what we have, uh, our hard work. We have fall seasons where there's a harvest. And we have winter seasons where things are not so good. It gets low. It gets kind of, uh, things die in our lives. But no matter what the season of our life is, God says, I want you to follow my will during all seasons of life. God says, I want us to follow my will, I want you to follow my will no matter what season you are in in life. And here is the number one primary will of God for all 
believers. Here is the number one primary will of God for all believers. And here's this season that God has, uh, that He wants us to focus in, is that there is a season of harvest. Yeah. We, that's not the first point. Where is the season that God is in? It is the season called harvest. Even though we may be in a wintry season in life, we may be in a fall season of life, we may be in a summer or spring season of life, God is in the season of harvest. Yeah. So no matter what season of life you are in, here is the will of God for every believer in this season. In this season, whatever season you are in, it is the season, God's season, called harvest. Harvest. Amen. God wants to remind us that this is his harvesting season, that he is calling people into a fellowship with him, relationship with him, and it is called the harvest. I'm not talking about the rapture. That's going to come. There is a harvest of souls that God wants to bring into his kingdom. So when he comes, everyone that has been captured into the harvest can go on the first trip. Amen. Are you with me this morning? The harvest is the number one priority of the church. It's the number one mission that the church should have. And that is to bring lost souls, not just into a denomination or into to a fellowship, but to bring lost souls into relationship with God Amen. Almighty. Amen. That is the number one mission of God, and this is His season, no matter what season you and I are in. Amen. This helps us so that whenever we are in those wintry seasons, we still don't forget our mission. Yeah. This helps us when we're enjoying the fruits of our labor that we don't forget that we're still in God's will. God's will is I need souls. God's Amen. will is I want you to bring people yeah. into the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what I want us to see. The obedience to God's will in his season will produce a harvest. And God will give a harvest to the person who will follow his will. Yes. I said to us last week that we must follow God's will. It is an immature Christian who does not seek God for his will. I don't care what season of life you is, you're in, it is, a, it is important to say, God, show me what your will is. Yes. He may, it may be the, the dark season, a hard season, but still God has a will in every season, and it is our job to seek God in that season. Can you say amen? Amen. So I'm going to answer the question today, how do we follow God's will in this season? How do you follow God's will in the season that you are in? Summer season, spring season, fall season, the winter season. How do you stay focused and follow God's will in this season? Here's the first movement I want you to consider with me. And number one, in order for us to follow God's will in this season, is number one, that we must wake up to the times we're living in. We must wake up to the times we're living in. I'm going to stay right in verse 35. I'm not going anywhere. In verse 35, Jesus says to his disciples, he says, Do you not say there are four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. He tells us that we need to wake up. He says, look, I tell you. That's what he means, look. Pay attention. Wake up, he says. I want you to wake up to the time that you and I are living in. Wake up to the times and what's going on. We must wake up culturally. We must wake up personally and spiritually. Culturally, even in their context, you would discover is close to our context. And that day they had issues of racism. Remember in our story, John chapter 4, that Jesus has traveled into Samaria. And Samaria and Samaritans and Jews do not get along. It's like black and white. They don't get along. It's like black and Hispanics. They don't get along. It's like white, blacks, and Hispanics. They don't even get along. He wants you to know there's racism in those days. And I want you to know there's racism in our days. They had, they had issues culturally. They're rulers. They had had some crazy rulers. They had Caesar who ruled over Jerusalem for Rome. They had Pontius Pilate who was ruling over Judea. And they had this weird dude named Herod Antipas who was ruling right there in Jerusalem. And Herod was a murderer and he was a pedophile. Yeah, let me tell you, he was a pedophile because the Bible says when John the Baptist was captured that the Bible says that Herod was having a birthday party and when his niece 
whom he took from his uh, brother's wife, his niece came in and gave him a lap dance. He said to her, girl, I give you half of my kingdom. Ask me whatever you want. And she, the Bible, and the uh, historians say she was between 12 and 14 years old. So rulers in this day weren't no good, just like today. <laughs> they, they got problems still. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Religion in that day was a fool, was a problem because the priests were full of greed and full of pride. They weren't leading people to a fullness of salvation. They were leading people into bondage. They were telling people to keep rules that they themselves were not keeping. The religion in that day was a hot mess. Culturally, that's what's going on. He tells us we ought to wake up culturally. We ought got to wake up even personally. Because in that day, just like today, some of us today, there was a tired season. Folk were tired of the things that were going on. There was a troublesome season. There was issues and trouble and rumors of wars. There was, there was taxation and crazy places. There was trying seasons. Your faith was tried. Is God going to come through or not? Is, is he still the one who's sitting high and looking low or not? Did he forget about us? There these trying seasons that are going on. There were even treasuring seasons. Where, where things were plentiful and, and, and all of that. Everybody is going through different issues trying to trust yeah, God yeah, 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 personally yeah. while you're walking in this life of faith. Amen. He tells us we've got to wake up to the time that we're living in. Spiritually, it was a dry season. Right. Not much of a word from God. Mm -hmm. The preacher not hitting on too much of anything. The, you know, they're dissatisfied. They're disgusted. They're even disturbed. That's the culture in which they lived in. And I got good news and bad news. The bad news is it's the culture we live in today. It's the same kind of culture, but the good news is, is that Jesus is standing in the middle of that culture making a promise to us that God, the kingdom of God is here. That's what he's saying. The kingdom of God is here. And he's saying, I have a harvest that needs to be brought in. And the same thing that he said then applies to us today. He says, I've got a harvest that must be brought in. But you got to wake. We have to wake up to the times we're living in. We have to wake up to the times we're living in. Sometimes we think that the culture, uh, people say it just like this, you know, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, the people say, uh, you know, G uh, G uh, the world is coming to an end. They say, oh, oh, you know, it's just going to get worse and worse. And here's what Jesus would tell us if he was standing right in front of us today. He's going to say, exactly. It's going to get worse, but that is why I left my church right here. I left my church right here, watch this, not devoid of power, not without a mission, not without a purpose, even in your struggling in your life, he said, I left you here for this purpose, I put my spirit in you for this purpose, my spirit is dwelling within you so that you may let the light of Christ Jesus shine out of you, because the season that Christ Jesus is in now is the season of harvest. Amen. So no matter what season you're in, winter, summer, spring, or fall, God's season is still harvest. He's not going to change that season. You know why? Because after the season of harvest, he's coming back. I said after the season of harvest, the old folks used to say he's going to crack the sky. After the season of harvest, you and I will hear the trump of God, which is going to sound. And those who remain shall be caught up in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. We'll be changed. We will go up to be with God and dwell with him forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. And because of that promise that's about to happen, that's going to take place, Jesus wants to remind his own disciples, listen, I want you to wake up to what's going on around you because this is the season of my harvest. Things are trying to get us off course and they're distracting us, but he wants us to wake up to see the times that are going on. Sometimes we sleep. Sometimes we sleep because, you know, we're just not paying attention. We know it's bad, but we're just not paying attention. God says, I want you to wake up and see what, what time you're living in. If homosexuals is on the rise, you got to know Jesus is coming soon. If, if, if all this trouble is on the rise, that means the church doesn't slow down. That means the church speeds up. Amen. That doesn't mean we just we just say, well, it's just going to be what it's going to be. No, it's, we, that's where we say, God, this is a season of harvest. Place me where you want. Come on now. That, that, that's what we say. That's God, right. place me where we want. Okay, that's number one. He tells us we've got to wake up to the times that we're living in. 
Look, I tell you. That's what Jesus says. Same verse, verse 35. Here's the second thing I want you to see. Not only does he say, wake up to the times that we're living in. Number two, he says, watch this, that you and I should look up from the trance we're lost in. <coughs> yeah, look up from the trance that we're lost in. That's what the text tells us. He says in verse 35, he says, look up, I'm telling you. Look, he says, look up for us to wake up. He says, so lift your eyes up and see the fields. He says, lift your eyes up and see the fields. Jesus is telling us that you and I have got to look up from the trance that we're in. Amen. There's a trance that's happening all over this world. Amen. There's a trance that is happening. And to be in this trance is to be aware, but not to be focused on, to be fixated on something else. You're aware of what's going on around you, but the fixation is on something that has nothing to do with what you are aware of. There are people, we are in a trance oftentimes. Jesus says to these guys, lift up your eyes and see the fields. He could have been saying this, number one, because after he finished ministering to the woman at the well, the Bible says she leaves her water pot, goes down into the Samaria, and she begins to tell the people about Jesus. And it's possible Jesus was telling the disciples, look up out there because these people are on the move. I think it's verse 30 that says, and they begin to move towards Jesus after the woman began to explain to them, come meet a man who told me everything that I did. He could have been saying that. Number two, he could have been saying, he could have been looking over the cliff and seeing the fields that they were white and ready to be harvested. And so he's telling them, I know you, they just came back with their cheeseburgers and Big Macs and saying, Jesus, don't you want to eat? And Jesus is saying, would you quit looking at the food and look at the field? Would you stop paying attention? Yeah, They're in a food trance and God is, and the Lord is saying, I want you to be on this ministry trance. Look up from what you got going on and see that it's the right time. Time, the fields are ready. He tells them, look up. That's what I want you to do. The disciples were focused on getting their belly fed. And Jesus has been working trying to get his soul fed by doing the will of the Lord. And so often, not only were the disciples in a food trance, sometimes we are in a trance. Amen. Our loved ones are in a trance. The world is in a trance. Uh, so much so that sometimes we get in a political trance. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. Yeah, we will not participate in government or we believe that government can solve all of our problems. That is a political trance. Here's the real issue that Christ is the only one that can help us in all that we are going through. Governments are only going to do what they can do to live. if they ain't greedy, if they ain't crooked. They're going to do what they do, but only the Lord can use us to do the right thing, to wave the, right, the banner of righteousness. It's a political trance going on today. Even some preachers are caught up in it and pushing one agenda over the other. Not a biblical agenda, but a political agenda. It's a political trance. Not only the political trance we see in our world today, there's a drug trance. Have you ever seen so many people strung out on substances? Whether it's pills or marijuana or they're putting it in their arm or whether they're taking it, you know, by, 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 my, by pills. They are, we are caught up in a drug trance. We are not focused on what's going on around us. We're caught up in what uh, is in our hands. We're in a racial trance today. Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah, all of the race issues that are happening, some are biting real hard on the race issue and they're making it more than it should be and some are trying to downplay it as though it is nothing. It's a racial trance and we're, we're not looking at the Bibles, we're watching all the news trying to figure out what we're going to do about these problems and what we find is that we're in a racial trance. We have a social media trance right now. Folk are into everybody else's business but they focus in on their own business. It's a social media trance. People can't even like themselves because they ain't got enough likes on their face. Facebook account. It's a social media trance. They're not focused on uh, life. They're focused on somebody else's life. Not only is there a social media trance, but there is a pornography trance. They've got our young people caught up into uh, sexuality and seeing things that crazy that change their mind. Did you not know that researches and results have shown today that young men in their 20s have ED, erectile dysfunction? Uh -huh. Reverend, what? Yes, young men in their 20s. Watch this. It happens because they've been in pornography trance. 
They have watched so much pornography that they have trained their brain to respond to a woman on the screen, but they cannot respond to a woman in real life. Come back here, listen to me. They have trained their brain from pornography that they cannot even handle. I've got proof to show you. They cannot handle a real person, a real woman in front of them because they have, uh, they've been in this trance. They would rather spend time on the computer screen than an actual person. They have they just said to themselves that the woman on the screen is easier to get along with than the woman in real life. So I, it, so I can get my pleasure without having all those extra issues. It's a pornography trance. The trance is so strong that if you did research, you would discover that even the sex trade industry is fueled by the pornography industry. It is a trance that is over our minds. And Christ is saying, I want you to look up from the trance that the world is I'm not finished. It's a romantic trance. Folk are looking at uh, television shows and believing the hype they see that if they feel love, then that means that they're really in love and that it's going to work. But when they fall out of love, that means the marriage is over. It's foolishness. Because anybody who's really married understands that there are days I'm not even going to uh, are there days that we're not going to get along but we know one good thing that we got commitment. Can you say amen? Everybody say amen. Say amen. 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 He says that we got to look up from the trance that we are lost in. And these things that we have seen, they're just trying to, they, they, we know what's going, we know something going on. We know something's going on, but because we're fixated in the things that are right in front of us, yes, yes. Uh, it's a trance. And Jesus says, listen, no matter what season you are in, I want you to keep the will of God first. And God's will, God's season is the what season? A harvest season. God's season is the harvest season. No matter what season you're in, summer, winter, spring, or fall, God's season is the harvest season. Are you trekking with me this morning? Yeah. All right, here's my third final movement in this text. Not only do we see, we see that he tells them, I want you to, I want you to wake up uh, uh, to, to the times that we're living in, right? He says, I want you to look up from the trance that we're lost in. That's what he tells us. Yeah. Still in verse 35, here's the third movement. He tells us then, I want you to get up and trust the Lord in the season you're living in. I want you to get up, and I want you to trust the Lord in the season that you are living in. Say it again. I want you to get up. I'm glad you woke up. I'm glad you're looking up. But now he says, I want you to get up from in the, uh, uh, and, and trust the Lord in the season we're living in. That's what Jesus says in verse 35. Notice again, he says to them, he says, I want you to, he says, look up and see the fields are white and ready for harvest, he says. He says they're ready. He says they're ready for you to do something about it. Yeah. Again, he could have been talking about the, the, the Samaritans that were on their way to him because they're going to have a high time when they get to Jesus. He could be talking just about the fields, using it as a metaphor. Look at it. It's ready. All the Lord tells us today is that his flock, the harvest that he wants to send into the church, he says they are ready. Amen. Yeah, it's ready. God is saying it's ready. The people are ready. But watch this. We have to get up. We have to get up. Yeah. Is what he tells us that we he he's not just sending them to them. Jesus had to go. It said it would need be that Jesus go through Samaria. Samaria, Samaria would not come to Jesus. Right. Samaria would not come out of Samaria. Right. The Samaritans would not go down to Jerusalem. Amen. The Samaritans would never go to Jesus. But Jesus Amen. need be go through Samaria. Yeah. Most times the Jews went around Samaria. They avoided Samaria. But the Bible says in John chapter 4 that Jesus had to go through Samaria because he had to see about this woman. This woman would then bring the people, give a testimony, and the people would then come to Jesus. Amen. And you see, church, what he's trying to tell us is that everybody ain't going to come to our church. Amen. Amen. They're not just going to come to the door and going to come in. Here's what he tells us that we have to do. We have to get up. We have to get up and we'll have to go. And then he says, listen, and then trust the Lord. What he is saying to us is this, his harvest is ready. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Number two, his harvest is ready. But here's number two, that God is ready for his harvest. 
Oh, come back here. You don't believe God's ready for his harvest? God's ready for his harvest because look how many people. Do you think God smiles when someone dies without Jesus, yeah, without yeah. repenting of their sins? Do you think God says, oh, well, another one's lost. I got a billion just like them. No, he said it's not my will that any should perish. That any should perish. Any should be lost. That's what his will is. He says, but that all of us would come to the saving faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not God's pleasure, not his will, not his desire, not yeah. his plan yeah. that people yeah. would be lost. That people would die and spend an eternity away yeah. from God Almighty. Yeah. It is his will that we would, people would yeah. find Christ yeah. Jesus and that right early. Right. I'm trying to tell you something. God is not on delay about his harvest. He is saying right now my harvest is ready. That's what the text says. 2,000 years ago, he said the harvest is ready. And I got good news for us now. The harvest is still ready. Yeah, the harvest is still ready. Yeah, the trouble is the sign that the harvest is still ready. The people deep in sin is the sign that the harvest is ready. He said the fields are white, which simply means it's ready to eat. It's ready to be gathered. And all of the darkness we see today, it is the sign that the Lord is saying the fields are ready. And if we will get up, he says, what's going to happen is, trust me, the harvest is going to come in. So watch this. He says, my harvest is ready. Number two, God is ready for his harvest. And here's the point I like and I want to share with you and I'm going to head in my seat is that you are ready for the harvest. Uh, no, no, y'all looking at me funny. Let me say it one more time and, and boost you up and help you stand up and be strong and understand this. That means there's an anointing on us for, to go and get the harvest of Jesus Christ. Because the harvest is ready. God is ready for his harvest. You need to know and have assured that you and I, listen, are ready to go get the harvest. Yeah, yeah, we're ready to go get the harvest. You said, Reverend, my life is a mess. He knows he's still ready for you and I to go get the harvest. You said, Reverend, I don't have enough money. He knows. And he says, I'm still ready for you, and you to go help me get this harvest. You said, Reverend, I'm working on my business plan. He says, I know, but in between you and your business, I want you to be about my business. This is the season for my harvest. You are ready for the harvest. You are ready for the harvest. God didn't put us in this hole in the wall because we're not ready. He said it's because we are ready. God said we are ready. Trust me. I'll make a way out of no way. You gotta trust me. The harvest is my soul, his mind. Your life is his life. And I want to tell you something else. There's a blessing when you go after his harvest. I want to tell you that no man has ever given up houses or lands or cars or family for his sake that he did not reward 100 fold in this life. God is saying, if you trust me this morning, trust, my, trust me in your pain, trust me in your setback, trust me as you're living this life, that I will bless you if you go after my harvest. to go after yeah. his harvest. So he says, wake up, look up, yeah. and then get yourself on up. Get yourself on up. And we're going to trust God for what he is going to do. I said, we're going to trust God for what he is going to do. So that means when you open your mouth to share Jesus, trust God that he is ready to save somebody's soul. Oh, and I want to tell you something else. That as we go forward and as we're praying and seeking God, I want you to pray. I want you to pray not just that God would save souls. That's, that's not what the problem is. He want to save you. I told you it's not that any should lost to be perished. But pray what Jesus said. But I think it was Matthew 9 when he says, well the fields are white and ready to be harvested. He says this, but we have a, we have a problem. Uh, we are short of laborers. He said, so pray to the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers into his vineyard. And I'm praying, and I hope you pray with me too. God, send somebody that will talk to my brother. Send somebody that will speak my child's language. Send somebody that can say it just the way they need to say it. God, send somebody. Yeah. So don't so 
stop praying at all. I know it looks bad. I know they look like they're headed in all the wrong directions. But in the name of Jesus, I said in the name of Jesus, we got a promise from the book that if we will go, he will do something. That if we will ask God to send somebody, he will send somebody. My granddaddy used to tell the young people when he was in the prison ministry, he used to say, son, if you don't listen to me right here while you're free, one day you'll be round up and you'll have to listen to somebody. But I got great news that even if we get bound up, even if your son gets bound up, even if your daughter gets bound up in something, if we will pray, God will send somebody to me. season is the harvest. God's season is the harvest. God's season is the harvest. And you and I have, we must just trust the Lord. There was a man who had a business that he was wrestling with for almost two decades. He was wrestling with this business whether or not he should keep it or whether or not he should let it go. And finally on Sun, Sun, one Sunday morning he heard his preachers talk about the business of giving it over to the Lord. Lord have mercy. I feel that he talked about to the young man, giving that business, giving whatever you have, giving the pain, the joy, the sorrow, giving it all your child, giving it all over and putting it in the Lord's hands. So finally the man heard the sermon and he walked out and as he's driving home, he made up in his mind, I've been wrestling with this thing for too long. And I'm going to give it over to the Lord. He said, I'm going to trust you, Lord, and put it in your hands. Well, unfortunately, that very night, the uh, this story goes that this man's building, his business caught on fire. It began to burn to the ground. And a friend called the man and said, man, your building, your, your job, your business is on fire. The young man got up. And he made his way down to where the business was, and he slowly went there. And by the time he got there, all he could do was stand there. And he had somewhat of a smirk on his face, a small smile on his face. And his friend said, man, don't you see your building is burning? He said, yeah, I see it's burning. He says, man, man, man how do you feel? He says, well, i tell you the truth. Uh, I gave this thing over to God this morning. And if he want to burn the business down, that's his business. You hear what I said? If he want to burn it down, it's his business. If he want to change something, it's his business. If you and I will give over everything, our children, our loved ones, our spouses, our lives, in whatever season you in, put it in his hands, trust him, that is his business. And I want you to look up and go after the harvest. I want you to look up and go after what God tells us to go after. For he will reward those who are after his Thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shepherd's Way Christian Church, or visit us on our website, www.swaycc.org. That's www.swaycc.org to hear more. To connect with us, follow us on Facebook. You can join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're located at 140 East Vance Street, Zebulon, North Carolina. Again, thank you for listening.